Welcome back to the Fox Robbins Business Show. Come on in. Uh, the Fox Robbins Business Show is all about developing your best business ideas. Uh, and we're here to, uh, to help and cajole and advise and be cheerleaders, you know, for small business. We talk about anything and everything about uh, a small business community. It doesn't matter if you're just uh, thinking about uh, starting a bu or buying a business or getting into a franchise opportunity, whatever the case might be, or you're, you're fully engaged, or you have a company that's up and running and you want to make uh, changes uh, to the company. Whatever your situation, wherever you are, we want to we wanna help and uh, provide, it, provide advice and encouragement. Uh, we've got a very, turns out, you're lucky because we got a very special show this time. Uh, I'm the co-host. Uh, Bill Fox and the other co-host, though, listen to this. This guy I can't believe this, Roy. <laughs> is provocative. Yes, I am. He's entertaining. Yes, I am. And always engaging. Well, thank you, Mr. Bill. <laughs> Coach Robbins. <laughs> and uh, speaking of a, a special show, uh, we've got a we have a guest this time, and it's uh, it's Roy Heffernan, who is owner the Life Is Good Company. Very successful, very interesting uh, company that you've got to hear about. But he's gonna—he's uh, not really gonna talk a lot about today. He's gonna go back when it was hard, <laughs> when it was scratching dirt. I think. And uh, Roy, nice to have you on the show. Thanks, Bill. Very Thanks, good. Coach. Good to see you. Great to see you too. You guys meet meet Roy Heffernan, and he's—he's uh, uh, he's gonna start in, and, and we're gonna start out by sharing the story <clears throat> and the the winning business ideas, but the. Uh, the, uh, for the first slide, I think, is called 78 Bucks or Bust, right? That's right. <laughs> so You riverboat gambler, you. <laughs> so the story, the story of life is good. What are you going to tell us this morning? Yeah, Bill, thank you. Um, before I jump into the story, just a little bit more about me. I am actually retired uh, from, life, from the Life is Good Company <laughs> right now. Yep. So I'm not in the day-to-day, -day, but um, I am... Uh, really lucky to be an owner, one of the six owners of Life is Good, <coughs> not one of the founders. Mm. We'll talk about them in a minute. Yep. Um, but um, six of us own the company and I'm on an advisory board and I get to work on projects that uh, quite frankly the folks that are uh, working day to day just don't have the time to um, dig into. Right. And so it's, uh, it's a pretty ex exciting mm. uh, situation for me. By the it, way, one, you know what, you know, six owners so it's closely held, it's private. You know, you guys never sold shares or, or went public, that kind of, that kind of deal. No, and um, that's part of the uh, $78 or bus story, so <laughs> <clears throat> we'll get into that a little bit. But, um, yeah, so I don't know if you remember the concept of Skunk Works, but Skunk Works was uh, developed at, uh, you know, a small group of sometimes executives uh, mm -hmm. just kind of peeled off and tried to solve problems. And that's, <coughs> that's right. what me and two other of the retired uh, Life is Good uh, partners are doing now, mm -hmm. and the three of us just have a ball doing it. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're working on the business while those other folks are busy working in it. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. They're driving the, they're driving the bus, but we're, uh, we're having some fun on some other things. Mm -hmm. so, so this is our, our new logo. We actually are um, beginning, to, um, <coughs> beginning to try to find uh, different ways to speak to the new uh, generations, mm -hmm. not only millennials, but actually our primary customers are the 30-something uh, families. Mm. We've done a nice job with baby, baby boomers, yep. but you know, as you and I know, baby boomers are dying now, yep. and it's not a great business model anymore. Uh, no, we are, you know, I'm a boomer, and uh, yeah, uh, could you rephrase that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean. We're getting older. We are getting older, and uh, spending less maybe sometimes. So yeah, right. it's, uh, it's an interesting <coughs> new challenge for us, as, yep. a, as, as it is for every other brand, quite frankly. So Generation X, you're saying, is a, one of your primary It is the primary. Married, the primary. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah, young families. People would have guessed millennials, but no. Why would you not want your young family to think life is good? That's yeah. a good way to start off. Right. Right, with a good positive attitude. Right? Exactly. I agree. So two guys started this company, uh, Bert and John Jacobs. And um, if we can go to the slide, uh, this is, um, I hope you can see it at home. It's a bunk bed. And uh, Bert's on the top and John's on the bottom, <coughs> and I'll, I'll have you know that they are my first cousins. Uh -huh. So Bert and John's mom uh, is my dad's older sister. Yep. And um, 
So while they grew up in a nice town, you can see maybe that um, it wasn't particularly an easy life for them. Mm. They were the babies of six uh, in the household. And uh, you can see Bert had to scratch the window in order to see outside up top there. <laughs> and you can see our crazy, my crazy cousin, John. Uh, we've wondered why he's so crazy, but you can see maybe he's been gnawing on the, um, the lead paint down on the radiator. Yeah, it looks down like there. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never been the same since. <laughs> Crazy's good. Yeah, it is. It is indeed. Well, anyway, they they um, they grew up in a household that um, was so fortunate to have uh, a person who lived and breathed optimism like nobody I have ever known, mm. and that is my aunt Joan. Mm. So Joan would uh, the kids would come home from school, and Joan would say to them, "Hey, kids." You know, we're sitting down to dinner here. Tell me something good that happened today. And soon and shortly thereafter, the six of them were interfacing with really positive things that occurred in their life, even if they did have a difficult day. So this a level of optimism played an enormous role for Bert and John going forward. And we'll talk about that in, in more detail in just a second. So they decided uh, as they graduated from college, Bert from Villanova, uh, Johnny from uh, UMass, Oh. that uh, they would rather, uh, you know, try to start their own business than get a real job. So, uh, <laughs> so they did so, and with $78 in their <coughs> pocket, mm. they um, began to go up and down the East Coast with other brands, not Life is Good. It wasn't mm. born yet. Mm. And so they would, uh, back in the day, you could actually go onto campuses and knock on dorms right. and try to sell gear. Sure. And they did that. They sold T-shirts with, mm. other, with other brands on there. Yep. And they had success selling teas and also chasing women. Yeah. And that's really was their no, probably number one goal. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I went to college. Yeah. 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 So this was the van that they uh, traveled and they actually lived in this van. They'd leave Boston with, uh, you know, a stack of t-shirts and they'd just barely fit on top because that's where they would sleep at night. And then mm -hmm. as they moved down the coast selling t-shirts, they would drop that uh, level down so they could have a little more headroom in the van. Sleep on the t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, wait exactly. a minute, that slide says, not all who wander are lost. <laughs> <laughs> and we believe that. We, yeah. have, we, we make many, many t-shirts with that, typically with um, a mountain in the background or a stream and so on. So those, yeah, those that are wandering are really enjoying and they're not lost. <laughs> so. During their five years on the road, they worked on their own brand. So mm. what is our brand? Mm. And it goes back to Joan, their mother, and optimism. And mm. sure enough, John, the youngest of the six, drew Jake. There's Jake. This is the original Jake. And um, so uh, Jake uh, came to be, came to be um, known as, an, as our hero, as our life is good hero. Yeah. And he became uh, a very much and quickly embraced now here comes a lesson for you entrepreneurs. If you can ever get your customers to actually define what your business is, you're in good shape. Boy, you bet. So this t-shirt was made and it was down Cape and that was our first customer down here on the Cape mm -hmm. and she sold through 48 tees just like that mm. and a very diverse customer base bought it. So she was excited about it. Mm. And she called up Bert and John and said, okay, I live, my, my office rather, my, my retail establishment here is right next to an ice cream shop. Does Jake eat ice cream? And Bert said, no, but he will. He's about to. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the lesson there. So a, cu a customer who already had success selling the teas raises her hand and says, I want something different and I know I can sell it. Right. Kind of a perfect scenario. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So then she says, oh, and by the way, I have a sister-in-law up in Maine, and she has a retail establishment. She'd like to sell your teas. Does Jake ride a bicycle? I'm, she's right near a bike path. He does now. He does now. <laughs> and Boy, so, this is primary market research isn't it nice? at its easiest. Right. Right. So she sold through those <clears throat> nicely. Mm -hmm. So then some things, some really powerful things started to happen. So that's, a, that's, that's a Jake on the, on the bike. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Is what that is. Yeah, yeah, hopefully he stayed on, didn't fall off that yeah. mountain bike. But yeah, that's, <laughs> that's him, and he's having fun. You bet. I was going to ask you, Coach, you know, a lot of people, all the people that you uh, counsel uh, feel, uh, I've got to tell the market, I've got to tell the market what it's, 
what, what it wants. What it likes or what it wants. You well, get whether, like uh, yeah, whether they want it or not. <laughs> <laughs> and the not makes them bankrupt. Uh, no, you know, just today, in this past couple of weeks, uh, teaching my basic marketing course at the college, and uh, we're, I'm hammering away at market research and the importance of understanding, finding out what does the customer want. Because if I can give the customer what they want, it makes it much easier to sell it, right? Yeah, listening is a big part of that, isn't it? I, like ways. Yogi said, you can, you can uh, learn a lot by just observing. <laughs> <laughs> So <coughs> then some things started to happen as the, uh, as the years uh, went on by, and Bert and John came to understand that they have an extremely powerful brand beyond making money and beyond selling gear to customers. Mm. And this is an example. These two twins wrote a letter to Bert and John. They were 10 years old at the time. One of them, I hope the uh, folks can see it at home. One of them has uh, missing it. a leg, right. and the other brother is blind yep. and born that way. Right. And the, 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 the beauty of the letter that they wrote to Bert and John was basically something like this. I hope you brothers love each other like we do too. Yeah. Even though we were born with some issues, we really have, we really have a great life. And it came, it came to represent something very powerful to our brand and we started to embrace this concept of get to. Mm. Now, what does that mean? Well, we all have chores that maybe we don't love to do. Yep. You know, I, I, I have to do the laundry. Yep. I have to go food shopping. I have to put the trash out. Exactly. Right. Well, what if we were to change that viewpoint and say we get to do the laundry because we have two legs. Mm. We get to go shopping for food because we have the money to do it and we live in a country that has wonderful food. And have a car and a license. Really changes the, uh, the outlook. Right, right. And so this is where <coughs> optimism at its real core uh, gets to change kind of who we are. And life is good, above all else, believes that optimism is empowering. Mm -hmm. That when we wake up with uh, a glass half full <laughs> mentality, yeah. with a I'm glad to be alive mentality and what what kind of fun things can happen today, mm. it changes who we are. Absolutely. It changes deeply. what we can accomplish. At the most basic, basic level, I agree. Yes. And so this concept of branding, I know you guys have had branding discussions in the past. Constantly. I'm going to share with you life is good's definition of branding. Mm. You're never going to see it in an MBA program. Mm. Know who you are and act like it. Yeah. That is the definition that we use. So right. if we know who we are, right. and then we always act like it, yep. We're going to be good. That's your mission, too. We're going to be good. Yep. So here's an example of knowing who you are and acting like it. So we had yeah. our offices right on uh, Boylston <coughs> Street when those uh, marathon bombings went off. Yeah. In fact, my attorney, our attorney, who reported to me for over a decade, got hit by the second bomb. Oh. Yeah. He's fine. Oh, thank God. Thank God is yeah. right. He has shrapnel still in his body all mm. over the place, yeah. but he didn't lose a limb, yep. and he lives with his four children to talk, talk about it yeah. and to live by it. Yeah. So we needed to make some decisions around, um, around the marathon bombing yeah. that, um, and I'm going to skip one slide because I want to get to this slide. Yeah. This was the, as, as you recall, the saying during that time, do you recall the saying during that time? When Boston we were, Strong. Boston, Boston Strong. strong. Right, right. Now, don't get me wrong. At Life is Good, we really respect Boston Strong. We needed to be strong. Sure. We got attacked, and we needed to be strong. Yeah. However, <coughs> when you think about who life is good and acting like it, that's mm. what our job is, mm. we didn't feel that that truly matched who we are. So mm. we, for the first time, put the word love on a T-shirt. Right. We sold 50,000 of these. 100% of uh, the proceeds went to the one fund. Right. And um, it, was, it was a real, it was a real um, test for us to yep. do the right thing and to represent our brand in the most positive way Corporate possible. Corporate social responsibility. Exactly. Talk exactly. about it all the time. Yep. So um, let me go back to that one slide. Yep. This was another thing that happened that really kind of woke up the brothers, Bert and John. This little gal was in uh, Boston Children's Hospital with uh, stage four cancer. You might notice, if you can at home, the life is good beanie that she has on. Yeah. Well, uh, an, an actual uh, guy did a, um, 
uh, article in the Boston Globe on her. Mm. And, and the, uh, the writer asked her, do you know what your, do you know what your prognosis is? Mm. And she said, yes. And she sa he said, do you know what hat you have on? And mm. she said, yes. And he said, how do those two make any sense? Mm. And she said, as a little 11-year-old, life is good means even more to me today because of my prognosis. Exactly. And so Bert and John captured this. They gave, all, they gave her one of every hat that we were making at that time. And she became the ambassador at Boston's Children's Hospital, going oh, door to door yeah. to other kids with terminal cancer. Yeah. By the way, <coughs> she just graduated from college, and she's doing great. Well, Fabulous. Well, Thank well, you for that. I'm yeah. sinking in my chair. Lindsay Began, and she's a doll. In fact, if you go online, you can see what we call one of our fuel stories. By the way, that's no, no laughing matter, that uh, attitude thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know much about this, but I have, I've done, I've read some articles, you know, that, that uh, the attitude that her attitude could well have to do, you know, with her progress. No doubt. Mm -hmm. I yep. mean, no, no, no joke, and, I, and I'm not, I'm not a, a crazy person. I mean, I'm just oh, saying, sure you are. I've read articles about this. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, uh, did you, you guys know that? Oh, I mean, totally. Absolutely. Totally. And so anyway, this represented yet another manner in which our, in which our brand was speaking to people mm. in ways that were far more important, quite oh, frankly, yeah. and more exciting to us mm. than, you know, whether or not uh, we're selling t-shirts. Right. And we've had people write into us um, that have buried their loved one in Life is Good Teas and things like this that yeah. are really meaningful. Yeah. So um, we'll, talk, we'll talk in another episode about how that led to Life is Good's integrated mm. model, which um, really led to the Life is Good Kids Foundation. But um, so that, uh, any questions on, on that that I can uh, Yeah, the, help uh, with? Uh, you know, we want to get uh, get back to uh, you know building the brand. That's uh, one of the one of the most uh, important reasons you know for inviting you on the show is is building a brand. And uh, uh, the and when I sat down to have the conversation with you, uh, so many people who are either starting a business or running an existing one mm -hmm. think, well, uh, I've got uh, My logo. A, a symbol, a logo. That's branding. That's it. I'm all I'm all set. And, uh, and the coach and I have done shows to, uh, to, to fight uphill and argue against that and say branding is a total concept. Yep. It's, a, it's a, uh, a total experience uh, encountered by anyone who uh, you know, comes in touch with your, with your organization. Yes. So you, and, and you have to know that and think, and think about it and develop it, of which you know, a logo or brand is, is certainly a part but only, only a part, you know, right, you, Coach? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you touched on something. I'm trying to remember who it is, having read well over a thousand books on business, because I'm boring. Uh, that's my hobby. I read business books. And uh, some time ago, I believe it was Guy Kawasaki from Apple, consultant, who said one of the most important questions a company has to answer for itself is why. Why are we in business? And the answer can't be to make money. That's not from the market standpoint, you've got one wonderful why mm -hmm. question answered by Life is Good, your company. So right. congratulations. Thank you. You know, if we, if you were to ask Bert and John, you know, did they make any mistakes throughout oh, the yeah. years? Oh, yeah. They would tell you they've made every mistake. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I say to people, scars. <laughs> I've got scars everywhere from the companies I ran. But if they were being honest and open, um, because they are humble guys, they would also share with you that they did a lot of things right from the start. That's true. And, yeah. and one of the things they did from the start was define who they are. Yeah, absolutely. And they haven't wavered from that in 24 years. And they'll never waver from it, yeah. nor will the company. Yeah, and there are decisions that are made every single day mm -hmm. as a company that um, either reinforce who you are or actually contradict who you are. Mm. And if you contradict who you are too often, you confuse the public. And if you confuse the public, they don't open their wallet for you Absolutely. And, and with you. You're on the way down. Yeah. Your company's on the way yeah. up. If they right. get confused and they, f they forget your raison d'etre, the only French I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's one of the things I really respect about Bert and John. Yeah. Is that, like, I'll give you an example. Mm, please. They had many opportunities to sell their wares, their wares to, <laughs> um, department stores. Oh yeah. 
And um, as you well know, if you decide to go, as they say, downstairs in the retail environment, right. um, you are going to lose control of your pricing yep. and pricing uh, you're especially. going to become a commodity pretty yep. soon. Right. There are a lot of temptations for a young entrepreneur to go that route. Sure, big volume. Speaking of which, uh, Roy, the 800-pound the gorilla with a machete and a bad attitude today is called Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> The all, all encompassing solution to all of our purchasing yeah, issues, right. right? And you, you guys have, because they would, they would want you on board. Yes, we do business with Amazon, you know, mm. but we do business carefully with Amazon. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you got to know, you got to know that gorilla. Yeah, and they're doing a terrific job in a lot of ways. So Good. my hat's off to them. But yep. you got to know that gorilla and be careful with you how you weave it into gorilla, your distribution. Right. It's got to remain in line with your why, That's your right. raison d'etre, your mission, if you will, your, That's right. your branding. Right. Right. But you also, I mean, channel, talk about as a channel, you know, other channels are, I mean, you have uh, stores or a store or stores. Yeah, Life is Good doesn't own any retail right now. We actually closed our brick and mortar, mm. um, which I actually think at the time was exactly the right thing to do. At the time to develop the brand identity for the public? Well, a little bit of I mean, you've promotion. seen what happened to retail recently oh, yeah. over the it's last uh, four years. It's a very yeah. difficult environment. Yeah. So for a company of our size um, with a um, e-commerce growing like it's been growing, right. and quite frankly, as you know, your margins are strongest mm -hmm. in your e-com environment. Sure. So why wouldn't you put your money and your energy toward e-com as opposed to, you know, the expense of brick and mortar. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, our wholesale business is still our number one driver. So mm -hmm. we have wonderful partners out there yeah. selling life is good from small mom and pops like the one down the Cape, still in business with us yep. um, from 24 years ago, uh -huh. uh, to much larger entities like Dick's Sporting Goods or uh, sure. you know one of the other larger retailers. Right. Yeah. How about fighting? I mean, people trying to uh, tr people trying to steal your ideas. I mean, I. I I don't want to talk about nasty things, but it does happen. Well, you, they got to protect. Have you had to fight much in that regard? Have people try to horn in and yeah. and take your ideas away from you? Yeah, Bill. When I was um, when I was active day to day, um, of course, you don't always love your your job. Every aspect of your job. If I did love if my you job. Do, you don't have a job. <laughs> I did. Lo I did love my job. Yeah. Certainly, collectively. But the <clears> one thing that I really disliked, Bill, was. Um, working with my attorney to protect our IP. Mm. Uh, because I, I just it, it just rubs me the wrong way when someone doesn't have enough creative juice mm. uh, in their own being that they have to steal someone's IP. Mm. And yes, we have it all the time. We will have it all the time. It's forced upon you. Yeah, I mean, if you're successful, you're going to have it. Yeah, that's right. They're, they're going to copy you. Right. So we've been in battles over the years, Bill. Yeah. Nothing that you know, became too, too ugly, but we, it's not a fun part of the job. It's not. Now, what about the, uh, uh, the products have to be made? I mean, who, who's making, who's making the stuff? You don't, you guys are not manufacturers. No. Um, you outsource that. All kinds, you all, are, all kinds uh, of. You are an idea company. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not, a, uh, you know, a manufacturer with the, with the, with the looms, you know, the looms in there squishing away and, you know, making, uh, T-shirts or other other items. You know, you you must use subcontractors. We do. Um, uh, if you focus on our number one product, which still remains T-shirts after all these years, yeah. um, we have uh, great partners in Peru, mm -hmm. Lima, Peru, mm -hmm. and their cotton is fantastic down there. Yeah, them in Israel uh, across the uh, world, they probably are the leading cotton. Yeah, so that's why our shirts are beautiful and yeah. really soft, and yeah. people love them and stay that way. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I have one. But you get... Uh, My you, grandson's name is Jake. That's why I know about Jake. That's ah, why I bought Jake. There you go. <laughs> you, haven't, you haven't worked with a subcontractor who tried to rip you off and so you start making a product and selling it outside of your company. One time in our 24 years, Bill, we had some, what we, what we say, some product going sideways. Mm -hmm. And um, we got wind of that very quickly and yep. we took care of it. Yeah. So okay. it does it does happen. You have to watch out for that. I yeah. mean, and you have to defend yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you do. You do. And uh is it you mentioned that that's a a a subcontractor. You don't have three, four, five, six 
subcontractors for your for the T-shirts. I mean, you got yeah, we have three. Oh, three. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. got to keep people honest, and I don't. You mean, do. I don't mean that. Well, you don't need you know, thirty specifically but honest, but you have to three. keep them in check. So yeah, absolutely, you, you checks and balances yep. on that. It's, it's just a smart way to do. It's like a, a cost issue, uh, and you got to uh, if you have a single a single subcontractor coach. I mean, it, uh, uh, and that that subcontractor knows that. Why can't he or she, you know, move that? Keep moving your your uh, the price up. Well, right. it's price, so your cost it's is delivery, going it's quality, it's all of the above. It's everything that Life it is, is Good represents has timing. to be yeah. backed up by your supplier, and you've yeah. got to make sure that all yeah. three of those suppliers know that these things are important to this company, and you better live by it, or you're not going to be one of the three suppliers. Exactly. You yeah. have to be crystal clear on that. Absolutely. And, and you have to, you know, stay with it over time. You have to monitor it. And you also have to be careful of the social aspects. You know, are are they using you know labor that's appropriate? Right. And, uh, are they treating yep. are they treating people humanely? Right. And you know, of all of all brands, life is good. You better you better have some people that care about their employees. Absolutely. You've seen that a lot. I mean, you've seen it with the sneaker people. Uh, I mean, uh, and uh, I, I mean, and, and Apple Apple has been uh, beat upon you know by using uh, subcontractor uh, contractors in China. Yep. You know, with uh, 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 mistreating, uh, maltreating employees and so forth. So, mm, that's right. Child you know. labor, yeah. and that's part of that. That's a branding. That, that's branding issue. The public is seeing messages that life is good uses you know, mm. <laughs> slave labor. That doesn't do well for your brand. No, no, no. That we would. Uh, that would be a real problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, good. Uh, we're gonna do. We're actually gonna do. Uh, Two more episodes to get a uh, right. full message in. So, we, but we gotta we gotta uh, end this one right for the moment, and then we'll start up in a couple of minutes. Okay. Great. Uh, thank you guys for watching uh, this first episode with with Roy Heffernan. Life is good, uh, and we got a couple of more episodes. They will be uh, out on YouTube. You know, feel free to go to YouTube, Fox Robbins, on uh, in the in the search box on YouTube, and, and as a library. Of past shows and this show, the shows with Roy Heffernan will be added to that library for your uh, for your convenience. And um, also, you feel free to send us a message on uh, foxrobbins at gmail.com with any comments you might have. And we will see you guys next time.